Okay, so let's get started today. Um, we're still on the grind. We're still the first week of January, second week, and uh, and and let's not give up, y'all. Let's keep going, y'all. Don't give up now. I know y'all ready. You guys started your goals, and now now you guys are like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'll take a break. Maybe I'll go play some league. Maybe you know. Maybe I'll start up a new game. Who knows? You know, who knows what the week will bring? I'll, I'll work when it's time. I've done enough work already. No. Drop that motherfucking game. <laughs> okay? I will take your phones if I have to. Get off social media and start drawing. Right? You little shits. You little noobs. Okay? Sorry. <laughs> I love calling you guys noobs. It's, it's like a term of endearment. It's like, what's up, noobs? You know, you guys are so cute. You just little birds. Cheat, cheat, cheat. Teach us, teach us. Anyway, <clears throat> um, today's class uh, will feature Portrait Studio. Uh, so Portrait Studio is currently on sale at fifty percent off, and um, and I wanted to show you guys its power. I want to show you guys what what it does. So we built this entire scene that I picked up from a piece on Reddit. Um, which I'm going to be taking a look at. And it's supposed to be a quick piece, uh, but I want to flesh it out. I want to just jump in there and flesh it out the Istabrak way uh, while still keeping the spirit of the piece intact. Um, and the way to like really wake something up is with some lighting. And the best way to get good lighting is to go to Portrait Studio. Okay, so I just picked up a really, really general picture of what I want the scene to do. It's not a lot that I want to add to it because I want to keep a lot of what the student um, invested into the piece. But I do want to show you that there are parts of it that do and will benefit from lighting once we add in that spotlight. Everything else is sort of a depth problem, a fundamental issue, um, really, really rough work that should by now like if you've gotten to the point where you were detailing the tips of the hair by now you should typically have edged out at least some part of a form study so however long it takes we're gonna flesh this out I'm gonna try to work as fast as possible to make it work I know I'm late today but I will stay here uh, we'll stay in, in, in after school do you guys remember the after school feeling when the school is quiet <clears throat> we'll do that after school thing today <laughs> Um, but yep, if you want to buy Portrait Studio, it's available at 50% off until the end of the month. Um, so you guys have some time. I kept the sale going because January is when New Year's resolutions really start. Um, so there's no point in ending it in December. Let's leave December behind. Horrid month. And, um, and let's just, uh, let's just get, let's just do things. I don't know where I'm going with this. To join us on Reddit, go to isterback.com and click on the Reddit icon to join. This is where you can submit your work. Upcoming challenges such as the environment thumbnail challenge uh, will be uh, posted soon. And it's a two-week bi bi-monthly challenge that will run for like maybe two or three months. And basically it's, I will give a pitch at the start of the two weeks and it will be to make a, 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 an environment in full color. It can still be rough, but it has to be in color. And today's lesson is going to help us, you know, figure all that out. But yeah, it's going to be a really, really crazy little uh, drill, uh, month bi-monthly <coughs> environment drill. Typically, you should be taking, you know, like two or three days for a thumbnail. But, you know, two weeks at a time gives us more people to come in, gives me more time to, you know, figure out what I'm critiquing, gives me more time to, you know, pull in the students so that I have something to look at at the end of the two weeks. But I will upload, upload that soon. I believe that will start toward the, towards mid-January or the start of February. I'm currently in this crazy limbo right now buying a house. Um, so it's going to be, it's really difficult to do that. Um, not as difficult as it is for some people who have bad credit, because you know you girl had good credit, you know. <laughs> that bank loan officer was like, girl, you set. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> but your paperwork is all out of the way. I know Tyler's laughing. The paperwork is out of the way at the moment, and it's just bargaining and all that. So, so I'm a little bit crazy right now. I'm just all over the place. I'm stretched so thin. So it won't be uploaded yet, but that is how the challenge is going to be. I give you a quick write-up, just really, really quick. He traveled 
in the canal and suddenly a shadow loomed over the canal that was um you know as if the sun had set suddenly or something like that so out of that you guys have to make a quick thumbnail to tell that little uh little story it's like a one shot type thing um <clears throat> uh, <laughs> the comment section only just <laughs> Anyway, um, so let's get started on this. Yes, this piece needed some lighting, so I'm just going to quickly do that. <sighs> I'm going to duplicate the layer, darken the upper layer, saturate it, darken it, and saturate it. This is going to be the dark mood. This is where it's all going to start happening. This is the shadow value, all right? And out of that, I am going to cut out where I think the cast shadow will be. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let it do a little thing like that. I don't know why I, what's with these accents, but this alone has helped the scene so much. It's a little bit off, I'll try to redo it because I don't like that tangent. Why? Why? All right. Let's try it again. All right, that's good enough. Thank you, Photoshop. <clears throat> um, Photoshop's like I meant to do that. So, <laughs> so I'm just gonna blur this really quickly. Blur it, Gaussian, because we want the we want the light to behave. And you know what? That's not going to work out. I'm going to just blur it with the blur tool for now. Okay. So this has helped the scene a great deal, but there are some issues in here that are really nonsensical. For instance, we have some shapes here that are really great. I love the shapes. I love how it's like form studies in an environment, but you need to start showing off the background. You can't completely cut off the background towards the upper half of the canvas. We need to see some breathing room, see that? So we want to, the rule is objects in the foreground are darker than objects in the background. So we want to show off some of the background so we can establish the light environment. What is the light environment? The color of the background and how it is affected by the light. So just by using polygonal lasso tool, I'm shaping the shapes out as well as establishing a background value. All right. And so these shapes are suspended everywhere. Some are, some are in the foreground, some are in the background. Um, and then you've got this ground level green, which isn't do really doing much. I want to extend it into the background. Say what the hell? Okay, I made it straight. And I'm just gonna paint it in <clears throat> with my blocking brush. By the way, all my brushes are also on sale, you guys. So take advantage of the sale while it's up. While you still can. All right. <laughs> And I'm just extending the background outward. I want the background to kind of have a bit more floor space. As you can see, it's actually opened up a scene. I have an open concept kitchen here. <clears throat> so very, very quick steps, basic stuff to establish space. So we've established an environment, we've saturated the darkness, and we've established a light source. <clears throat> you don't have to keep the light, you know, if you don't want the light, don't keep it, but you want, you still want volume, and us extending the background outward is still establishing the volume. This is going to be a pretty lengthy process. I'm going to hide the light behind one of these dudes, as if it's just barely sneaking in. And the best way to do this is with lasso tool, that's your best friend. So in Portrait Studio, we kind of built the scene, and I ju I'm just trying to track the cast shadow off her arm. And I'm going to grab her and just cast some shadows on top using the shadow color. Actually, I'm just going to darken the whole thing. Gosh, 
copy paste, go back to before I painted over her. Paste. And then delete at the cylinder values of the arm, the cast shadow there, the top of the head, part of the dress. <coughs> All right, so just really topical stuff. And then most importantly, the shadow color that we now have for the ground is gonna be the cast shadow color. So again, with that question that we talked about last week, Istabrak, how do I know which values to put where? This is how we know. By knowing what the light environment is and casting on top of that the wash color which will taint or tint, tint the the value of the colors the hue of the colors through that filter of the wash so a thin blue almost you know full opacity down value to sit on top of all the other colors will manipulate the colors to make them look like they're all part of one environment so one wash that is half transparent opacity <clears throat> on top of all the existing colors unifies these colors under one wash so some red still comes through some orange still comes through but but enough that the blue has affected it so it looks like they're all part of the same environment same thing goes for for the value of that color you threw on top so that's why i use darken darken throws the color darken mode on photoshop throws the color as well as throws the value out of that everything is getting adjusted for this new light <clears throat> I'm just going to give this some fog all right so now for the heavy-duty stuff the heavy-duty stuff both in me correcting it as well as stuff that you guys should be doing now we need to separate these shapes from each other so it's gonna be like a form study madness here in a little while and the colors are great but I really like when you are just you know doing like a quick little nothingness you know just so that you can stay busy it's not really sh it doesn't really have a shape it's not something with a story it's just a bunch of nothingness just to keep you busy keep your hand busy keep your brain busy you still want to attempt uh, you know some shapes you still want to attempt some sensical kind of rendition of a cube you still want to represent volume you still want to address perspective some topical level the fun is that you choose any color you want so look at this magic we're just going to put in some really basic foreground blocks with this deep blue everywhere select inverse and just cast that background color that all so important background color on top of everything I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kind of eclipse that orange and just look look at what happened to the space suddenly it all opened up so you had no depth markers you had no depth established I see that so we're opening that ground level here And now we have objects in the foreground, objects in the background. So I'm just going to make this really quick shape sit in the foreground. And I'm going to make the shape directly behind it a little bit lighter. Select inverse with that atmospheric color. I'm going to keep that orange the way it is. Oops. Okay, so we've opened up the space so significantly. Oh, and we have a couple more shapes to make sense of. I'm just going to darken these boys to be a 
a little bit stronger in the foreground. Everything in the background will get a really, really easy going atmospheric rise. Okay, so the, the room has completely opened up and this is how you build space by stab having anchors. What is closest, what is furthest, and what is in between is the space. Write that back to me. So when we have objects, and that's it, that's how you create depth in a scene. Oh, Mr. Brack, how do I make this open? What is closest, what is furthest? What is closest? <clears throat> what is furthest? And it's not about these. It's about these making all this possible. This is what happens. So this being faded and in the distance, this being darker and sharper in the foreground. I mean, you could blur this, have that cam camera blur. But it's all about how we opened up this floor. And that's why we don't put the main character here or here. We put them here because that's what we just did all this for. That's what we established. Anchor A, anchor B. And now we talk about what's the difference between anchor A and anchor B. We can just talk about one of them. So this is darker. Sharper, optional though. <clears throat> Bigger. And it stacks. Okay? It's in front of everything. It'll, it'll overlap the foot of the character. It'll overlap a lot of stuff. But that's how you establish space. By obviously having at least one of each. Now imagine multiple, imagine stuff in the middle, imagine stuff actually taking shape, and that's how you create an environment. You're, you're learning the depth with, in a lab environment, in a safe, closed environment, without having to worry about telling a story. And when you start telling a story, that's when you start adding conditions on top of these markers. But you must always have these mark markers in every single bad illustration, environment illustration I've ever seen has none of these markers. Or has one but not the other. Has a lot of close-up shit, nothing in the background. Has a really bad horizon line cut. Has some really weird crap, you know, when in, in the background, some excessive, like, pizza dough-looking mountains and then nothing in the foreground and then just a character in the middle. It's these two that really are, are, are kind of saving the day. It's these two markers. So, what is closest, what is furth furthest, and the space in between. Um, the, the, the fact that they create the space in between. In be in, in, and in between is the space, okay? So, in your upcoming, as soon as I send these out, so I'm going to send these pitches as soon as Tuesday the 14th. <coughs> All right? When I send these out, they'll be, they'll be up hopefully by the 14th. You, you guys will have a two-week period until the 28th to create this uh, environment. And this environment's criteria is having these depth markers. So for this particular painting, it's not just about you know the depth markers. So we still need some more depth in the background. We still need a real anchor for the distance. But so far, so good. Okay. You can lighten this up a little bit higher and then to frame the piece because we don't want the upper part to look that strong. We can darken the top half at an angle. Okay, and I usually do this shit at the end, but let me just do it now just to show you its benefit. It's adding that depth, that, that fog to help the foreground. Do you see how much work we're doing for these two little boys in the foreground? Why? Why are we putting so much effort? I mean, I just answered it, but why are we putting so much effort to help these little boys? So what do, did we do to help them? We gave them shape, we put them in the foreground, we made them bigger, and I threw a big green wash on top of everything to push this all into the distance. And then, and then we reframed to have stuff in the foreground uh, because we don't want the light of that green to travel all the way to the edges of the canvas. We want it into the middle foreground to have that light. Okay, so why did we do all of that? And while you guys answer, I'm just going to keep rendering. For her, because she's under the light, I need her to be a little bit darker. That's going to be tricky. 
I wish she was on her own layer. I wonder if that's worth the effort. <clears throat> anyway, so the main light is coming from above. That light needs to be a little bit more hazy. I don't want it to be too sharp. But if I had layer access, I would totally just like go a like a wall with this light. But let's just um, is that right? Did I use that right? I don't care. I'm just using words how they how they make me feel is how I use words. <laughs> I barely look up like definitions of shit. Sometimes I look up spelling. Actually, I look up definitions a whole lot. Um, a wall on the head. I want I want a wall on my brain. Anyway, um, we need to start giving this some shape. So like really, really basic cube shadows. Nothing extensive, nothing crazy. Just thinking about where the direction, general direction of the light source is. So yeah, you're doing painterly, but it doesn't mean there's no light source. I don't care how painterly you're going. You still need to make some sense. You can't have light occupy either half of the shape. Can you? No because it's, it doesn't make any sense. There's gonna be more than one, there's gonna be one half that has more shadow than the other half. So all this, so when you're, when you're painterly and you're all up in your brain and you're, and you just did, oh, never mind. I'm not gonna make any drug jokes. Um, and you're just, you know, just having fun. <clears throat> you still wanna have fun with some kind of connection to the, to, to reality. You still want to, you know, you're going to draw a very rough shape and you're going to mess around with lasso tool. But remember, if it's in a light source, more than one half of an object, one half of the object is going to have more light than the other half of the object. Right? So that's something that we did very roughly. I don't have to actually make sense of this, but I am going to try to keep things as close as possible to something that is functional. basic lighting, basic shapes, that light may be given a little bit more than that. Okay, and then we're going to 100. And we're just cleaning up some of this mess. So e even if it's something painterly, even if it's something crazy, we still want to have some kind of sense to at least how or order to how we're bringing in these values. So I'm just going to make one big piece kind of just sit on top like that. All right. And then the top half of all of this may be getting some lighting. And this is where your form studies come in, you guys. Select inverse. It's never a waste of time to practice a cube because everything comes out of that cube. That cube is how life is created, right? How matter exists. So in order for you to build, you need to, you need to have actual matter. You need to know what matter does in light. And I'm done with the, with the, with the, with the whatever they're called when you, uh, the parable, was it? All right, so more than one half of the shape is going to be in light. So I'm just I'm just doing things really generally. This is as general as it gets when throwing down random values. I don't actually have to build a functional cube when I'm doing painterly, but I, I do still want something that looks like at least looks like it makes sense. But yours didn't look like it made any sense at all. Well, fuck you, it's the rest. <laughs> Talking to me. Well, fuck you, it's the right. <laughs> At least I tried. Jeez, I put, I put all my effort in there. <laughs> well, it didn't look like it made any sense at all. Well, fuck you. Um, so let's try some other stuff here. So this basic shape. So I'm just going to select the mini shapes all around. And I'm just going to let my really, really unforgiving blocking brush kind of do the work. So I'm going to figure it out, choose where the shadows are, 
<clears throat> and then I'm just going to keep it in its value environment. Right, nice, and in the dark. These, these do is, I mean, unless they're going to glow and they really shouldn't, I want to kind of just throw them in the dark. <clears throat> the way you guys react to me and respond to me in my head, it, it's just so fucking funny. <laughs> you guys talk a lot of shit, let me tell you. All right, so it's really nice when you have that. Um, but I also like the possibility that it might be, it might have subsurface scattering on it. You see, everything is about that, that spotlight now. I just want to correct this. But, you know, I like, I like the orange as well. It, it kind of did, did something. And all you have to do is just carry on with the same thinking, is that I would like these rough shapes. I want to stay loose. I'm trying to do a loose study. I'm trying to have some fun here. Nothing too cerebral, but still manage to have something that looks like it was a concentrated, at least to some level, uh, expression of my skill set. Okay, and that's it. So you don't have to have the perfect shapes right away. You can work on your anchors. So this anchor in the background here is going to be the thing that makes us feel like we are in a, a very distant room or a very big room. And we can just have more and more of these little fellas just hanging out. You see that? More of one part of the shape is in shadow. And that's all we really had to do with it. Oh my god, I just drew a tick. <laughs> Wow, Mr. Brock. I literally just drew a, a dongus. Um, oh, it's okay, whatever. Dongus is half the world is full of don ha uh, there's half the half the population has a dongus, so it's nice to celebrate it once in a while. We all came out of a dongus, <laughs> some somehow. <laughs> all right, it's a sharp dongus. Um, what else? What else are we doing to make this anchor between these two shapes work? point is kind of a little bit much because it's distracting from the focal point. Blurring it is definitely a great way to go, but I'm just going to just cast it in some distance value, just like that. Then we're going to have some floating dongases. I'm not actually trying to make that happen right now. <laughs> I'm going to use that green. So Isarek. All right, so we have a dark scene and we have a green here. How do I make this object look three-dimensional? So you make sure that you start off with that green, but then throw that background color on it with some kind of opacity. And then think about where the light source is coming from. It might be a different light source for the background. So it might be like not so spotlight, it might be some kind of ambient thing. But if this is the only light in the whole room, the background would be pitch black. So there's something going on out there. All right, really, really basic shape. So if you want something more cerebral, you can do something like this. You can just try to make these shapes work with more surfaces more more surfaces on the three quarter i mean on the on the on the form study you can go in there and zoom in and add to it as long as you zoom out and adjust it to its environment <clears throat> for these little dudes they're getting some kind of light from this nearby spotlight and, and it's just a matter of balancing it, eyeballing it, and zooming out. I'm going to grab the earth color, and I'm just going to throw that in there. Just really lightly. See that? That works. And now we have some kind of surface. So guess where all this transfers to? It transfers into your, into your uh, environments, transfers into the rocks you draw. When I was young, when I was your age, I was obsessed obsessed with rocky landscapes i thought they were so mesmerizing i thought that it, only a real magician can paint really cool rocks and when i saw rocks painted well in a painting i was amazed i was floored in fact it would almost bring me to tears because i'm like why don't my rocks look like that why do my rocks look like mashed potato <laughs> and my questioning that is what led me to be the teacher I am today because I became obsessed with them. And that's how I learned about the cube, how important the cube is. That's what, nobody taught me the cube, I discovered it. And, you know, I'm a big brain, you know how it is. 
But yeah, um, yeah, I don't like that tangent. It's fucking killing. <sighs> so when I discovered it, I realized, hey, what the hell? Everything is part of the cube. All I got to do is learn that. And then suddenly I was painting mountainsides and, and doing commissions and my quality went like whew, all the way up. I'd quote a price and they'd just be like, okay. Because that's why it's initially they came is because they were like, you know, this is some good work. All because of the cube. So objects in the background can get a blur. Objects in the foreground can get a blur. We're just doing really basic shit to flesh out a scene. And I've seen game splashes with less rendering than this. The only thing that needs work is our focal point because everything is pointing at our focal point. So it was not only... <clears throat> the hell it was not only the background and the fact that you had no light environment that was a problem it was just the fact that you didn't have volume in anything nothing had flesh but did I do anything major to this piece no I did nothing major to this god damn it <clears throat> so right over here you know, there's a little bit of cleaning to do. But that's a, li literally the cleanest we're doing. And this is the kind of stuff that you can keep if you want it to stay loose and fun. But as you can see, this shape over here, you know, it's all, it's all rough. Why? Why does it have more volume? Why does this shape look more three-dimensional than this one? Because we have light on more than one half. And you throwing this big blotch on the far dark half is what interrupted it from looking like a volumetric but painterly pa uh, piece. So, it's, so for it to look, this looks painterly and still has volume. Only because we shifted everything to the side. This doesn't even have a bottom side to it or a far or a dark side. We just have the light there. Okay, so I hope this was a good lesson on volume. I hope this was a good lesson on depth. Uh, the background, st I would love for the background to feel a little bit lighter, like it got brighter towards the, the, the closer we got to the horizon. Alright, so we're just really gently kind of just pulling that value up. Oh, just over so gently. What, the, what did I just say? <laughs> okay, so we're just, you know, in, inviting the eye to go there. Or we can just darken it ever so slightly. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> Always saturate, though. So this is why I say I would like the whole piece to be a little bit brighter in the background. Separate your val separate three things. Your main object, your background, and your foreground. That's it. So this, 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 this could all be, even the ground could all be on the same layer. The background proper, airspace, foreground, and her should all be in a separate background, a separate layer. This is what I would do. You know, and I'm not crazy about layers, but this is what I definitely would do, just so that we can have more volume. <laughs> Fabric has lots of subsurface scattering. I think that desaturates a little. Tree fitty, you got it. I named a price and they were all like, okay. <laughs> At the Painting Grammy Awards, I would like to thank the cube. <laughs> we all came out of a dongus 2020. <laughs> It's a shame, Dongus. Um, <laughs> I think it looked fine when it was all abstract, but once the sparks started making things make sense, they should be a bit darker to fit in. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's, it's your choice what you refer to as abstract, but in my opinion, y'all got no business being abstract if you guys are still at the stick figure stage, you know what I'm saying? Abstract is not a, is not an excuse to skip your homework. All right, abstract is not an excuse to be bad at something, uh, to be bad at art. Abstract is not going to excuse you from sucking. I, I'm sorry, that's just how it is. 
Casting shadow really gently. All right, deselect. And so the shadows on her, the reason why I would just want to spend a little bit more time on her before I close up shop is, you know, I, hey, this took a lot less time than I thought it would. <laughs> Damn, I work fast nowadays, eh? Damn! Why am I doing that accent so much? It's all in Tyler's fault. Come on, Tyler! It's his fault, y'all. He's from Minnesota. Wisconsin. <laughs> okay, so I just really uh, shabbily selected. And look at what just happened, you know? It's, it's such a pretty little thing. When you darken the value directly under the light source, it's so strong in effect. And then we are just throwing that in some light. So we extended the ground. What are some things we did? Some people, uh, list them out for me. So extended the ground. Don't, don't copy what I wrote. Copy, <laughs> say your own things. Um, we added a light source with the help of Portrait Studio. You can do spotlights, you can do all kinds of shit. It's available on my website, 50% off. It helps support me, it helps support my channel by buying Portrait Studio. <clears throat> and then we added foreground. Uh, this is a horrible tangent right here, I'm so sorry about that. Right? Foregrounds are an anchor to help establish depth. We added some distance objects. We threw some objects in a big haze of green. They're all pretty much an anchor right now. They're all piece B, and these are all piece A. And the space in between, after extending the ground and adding more floor space, we created a room. And a room is always what you want to do. You want to create a room, an area to travel. That we feel like we have breathing space. We can travel in there. And that's where we put someone that, that is traveling. All right? And then finally, I want to show you one thing. And remember, these objects in the distance are all feel smaller in comparison to these chonguses. All right? <laughs> And then finally, we have scale on the object. When the object is shrunken, right, so the main girl right here, this girl, when she is shrunken down, the room will feel so colossal and so open. And that's just how you would do it. But what you guys would do is you guys would shrink the whole scene and add more form studies around. No, all you gotta do is just shrink her. Right. And suddenly the room will feel massive. <laughs> Excuse me. Do you guys see my cursor? Yeah, you should, right? Yeah. For some reason, um, Discord screen share stopped showing the cursor and I'm not sure how to fix that. If anybody could comment and tell me how to fix that. Alright, we just need to give her back her cast shadow. So when we shrink the character, the room feels humongous, the room feels massive in comparison to before. Where the room felt pretty constricted. But in comparison, it's constricted. All around, this is a pretty big room. We're seeing a lot of the space in the room. It's just in comparison to this, it feels constricted. But because it's really all about her dance, all about who she is, I'd rather keep it this large. It's really just about, you know, what she's doing. She's like, you know, dancing in circles. So imagine if you went into this. Yeah, you went into it all rough, but you went into it with some some, you know, concentration on volume and the cube. You, you would not have come out with such a flat piece that looks like it was like, you know, it's, it's, it's something painterly coming out of my students. I want it to still be able to go on a portfolio, you know, and you can name it under the category painterly sketches, quick sketches, quick um, ideas, uh, meditations, whatever you want to call them. Uh, but, uh, but always try, and the colors are beautiful. You chose some great colors. 
uh, you have an eye for color and I'd love for it to be um, you know harnessed um, but still but still kind of controlled by some some representation of volume space a three-dimensional oops we kept the old one <clears throat> So, before, after, now what are some things people said? So, we have <clears throat> the abstract shapes are rendered realistically, so we wouldn't consider abstract when it comes to form studies. We, you, added the highlights to the dancer, <laughs> foreground and background for space, the cube for forms, light environment. What did I do to the light environment? I don't know what you're talking about. I see the cursor. Okay. Yeah, for Discord, I think you have to capture it the whole screen, not just Photoshop. I haven't tried it in a while. I never clicked Photoshop. It was weird. Yes, I'm texting. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jessica. Thank you for the tip. Thank you. So does a restricted enclosed space still count as a landscape study like canvas or forest canopies? Yes. Caves or forest canopies? Yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> yeah, so for the upcoming pitch, for the um, environment, whatever I describe is going to be what's acceptable. You guys aren't inventing your own scenes. Um, you, you guys will follow the, the, the brief, uh, but, uh, but yeah, um, those are considered landscape because there's just a zoom out. It's a long shot, um, of an open natural space. All right. Um, I have a perfect cube sitting in my living room. All right. People paint abstract uh, shapes and form studies all the time. I mean, everything that's not photorealistic is abstract to a certain degree. Uh, what's this argument about abstract? What's this argument about abstraction? You can't use abstract as an excuse not to do form studies, so just sit down. <laughs> all right? If this was a form study scene, if it's a scene full of shapes that are floating, please give them some volume. No, it's not acceptable to not have some kind of volume in there because we're trying to teach you volume. Your brain doesn't know how to add volume. You tell your brain, hey, it's okay, you beautiful butterfly. You don't have to learn how to sculpt. You can draw some random shape. No, absolutely not, not acceptable. Um, no cityscapes, no, that's, I, mean, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say cityscapes. We're trying to teach you how to turn, cityscapes are just full of cubes. We're trying to teach you how to work with polygons. So I wouldn't say cityscapes, it's just too technical, too, too architecture, arch, uh, architectural, because you're just tracking vanishing lines and perspective lines. I'm not teaching you guys that, that right now, I'm teaching you guys environments, open environment concepts. Somewhere where you can wander. The pitch will reveal all the information, but back to that abstraction thing. It's not an, ex it's not, it's, I mean, if, ugh, like if you're too technical and you draw too much technical shit to loosen up, I would assign you a crazy abstract piece. It's a tool. Abstract stuff where you're just going crazy is just fun. But it's, it's there's no fun without a little bit of order or else we're just running around humping trees. Okay, so we want to <laughs> have some kind of order. And all I said was this should be more dark than this half. This should be more dark than this. You don't have to, you can still maintain most of the abstract attitude you have, but I would recommend some representation of volume because it raises the skill level that you're representing. It makes the scene more cool and interesting. We, we can't do much with this. I mean, all, all we can do out of this is how do I feel when I look at this? All right, well, I feel a little bit, you know, like the greens are nice and the blue is a very strong blue, very bold. The green is very uh, wispy and, and the orange is passionate. It's just passion. That's what I feel. <laughs> but that's all I'm going to be able to work with this. I mean, unless you're trying to get higher to make people feel things. You want to get higher to create spaces. 
get paid because most of the people you know that write want their spaces represented that they're drawing <clears throat> also the argument was because Kyle called the form studies abstract I guess it's confusion over the meaning of abstract I assumed they had form anyway no you mean before no they didn't have much form it was flat values they were just blobs beside each other Abstract blobs are commonly assigned as form studies. No, what I mean by abstract is Picasso. Like there's not any volume. It's just a series of two-dimensional surfaces or planes juxtaposed or, or, or adjacent to each other, which is what this is. We have a bunch of blobs everywhere. These are actual blobs. They don't meet at any vertice. They don't, like look at this here. They don't match. They don't, they don't come to any point. They, they don't share a surface area. It's not a shared edge. It's abstract, meaning that it could be a cube, could be a cloud, could be your mom. <laughs> um, oh, this is a strong blue and the orange is passionate. <laughs> yeah, so is what if the forms are studying us, Jaden <laughs> Um No, it's abstract when we see how I look. This is why this is not abstract anymore. Pay attention, please. This vertice is matching this one it looks like there's there's an edge to be met here this is aligned with this we're we're adding some some kind of volume this could be connected to this could be connected to that and and this could just be a, you know a random little dude and and then we just keep going from there we could connect this to that and just completely cut all of that off and then we have a little bit more you know something a little bit more cohesive but oh, I didn't do that I kept it the same because we're trying to keep some of the looseness but we're still aligning some surface this is what I'm saying you have to do when you're in your loose you know hippie dance around the fire and you're just trying to do something loose still try to match vertices to each other try to match surfaces surface areas try to share edges with other surfaces so that they you know this surface and this surface share one common edge you understand me now? Yeah, Instagram made it less abstract by adding depth. How did I add depth? By doing that, what I just described, matching these points together. Uh, they didn't make sense anymore uh, and needed some shading, and she added them. And, and the shading wasn't that extensive. That's all I'm saying is that you want to keep something abstract, and you want to do something less cerebral, but you still want to have fun. Um, you can do so by going to surrect.com and purchasing Porsche Studio 50% off until the end of the month. <laughs> My brushes are also on sale. All right. So whenever it comes to form studies, I'm in I'm I'm the kick in the pants, kick your ass attitude is the brag. I'm not always that. When it comes to form studies, I am that. Because it's 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 your lifeblood as an artist who's trying to paint things realistically who's trying to learn what to do with their brush, you have to do form studies. So when it comes to whether or not volume is there, whether or not volume is important, that's when I get a little bit crazy. No, I just get crazy. I just get crazy. Because I'm trying to make you guys appreciate how much improvement it will come from form studies. All right, and it's added to my 2020 campaign. <clears throat> it didn't have before. Now it does. In the context of paint over. <clears throat> well, the context is paint over, and that's basically what we're doing. Is that the context is paint over? I'm doing a form study with this in the background. <laughs> there you go, Benjamin. <clears throat> So that's it for today. I hope you guys learned something about depth. I hope you guys learned something about volume. I hope you guys learned something about light environment, matching colors, carrying colors, um, keeping them orange, but they're, they're just in the dark. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, not breaking the light environment, knowing what to do with your values, your lights and your darks, how to shade objects in the foreground, how to shade objects in the background, um, the, the power of a form study, the power of an edge, and the power of Portrait Studio also. Uh, on sale at 50% off at com slash store. 
<laughs> and um, and lighting. Look at this spotlight. It did so much for the piece. And I love this little cast shadow coming off her arm going down that little line. It's almost like a vanishing line from where the light is coming from. See that? It tracks right off the light. I love that. And that's something that I picked up off Portia Studio and placed it in here. If it wasn't for that the model over here as my reference I would have probably just made like a really weird little shape and even and this is just super super rough super painterly still very abstract all around um, just at you know just surface level it's just an abstract scene and that we have a bunch of sh floating shapes in a green room with a spotlight and a girl dancing at the time. <clears throat> I guess that's what you mean Kyle. we still don't form study February not my idea um, it was my idea I'm claiming my child back <laughs> Form study February. I, I don't know. Every day should be form study day. Today's class was fun. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Ista. Thanks, Mods. You can have a good weekend, too, I guess. <laughs> um, okay, so to purchase Portia Studio, in case you didn't hear it, the seven times that I said it, go to istabrak.com slash store. You can purchase it here. It'll be on sale until the end of the month. To join us on Reddit so you can hop on the... <clears throat> environment challenge coming up where you will be doing everything we did today but on your own and critiqued in class after two weeks go to istabrak.com and click on the reddit icon my brushes are also on sale if you're interested in any of the brushes i use today and if you want to join as a patron um you can do so uh for a dollar um so it's not you don't have to be a patron to be on reddit it's free this whole channel is free but if you want to support the channel in any way, it's just $12 a year, a dollar a month. And it, if everybody on Reddit who uses Reddit um, actively joined as a dollar, I really wouldn't need to constantly promote Patreon all the time. And my goal is a thousand patrons. Um, so if you guys can help me meet that goal, that'd be amazing. <clears throat> and my channel is not really represented by anything. There's zero monetization almost on it. I make like three cents a day. Um, not even three cents a day. Um, I make so little that Google doesn't even pay me because I haven't <laughs> hit the cap where it, it's even worth sending a check to me. So um, that's just because that's how Google works. Um, so you have to meet a minimum amount before they start sending you a check. So it's because my channel is not monetizable, because my videos are too long, because my classes are in-depth. Uh, so if you want to curb that damage um, and help me on Patreon, you can do so at istabrak.com. Uh, I mean, patreon.com slash istabrak, or just go to istabrak.com, the link is right there. If you want to join as an apprentice, I just sent out apprentice um, assignments for everyone. Really, really interesting. We're also talking about environments, so if you like getting a double curriculum on that, uh, join us on Patreon as an apprentice. You get all my private um, streams, you get a private Discord uh, community, uh, all your work is critiqued, you get all my brushes, um, and you get uh, any any personal work and time lapse videos. Um, the videos usually are twenty minutes to forty minutes long of my own personal work. I haven't been doing much because I've been very very sick and the holidays have been crazy. Um, but I hope to have some after hour streams this weekend where I'm painting fully rendered portraits again. God willing, if the if if the universe allows it, if the universe feels like I'm ready to start painting again. Um, <clears throat> and that's it. Thank you everyone for coming. I really appreciate when you guys turn out for the for the live classes. I understand not a lot of people can show up to them. But thank you to Big Turnout last Tuesday and thank you for this one as well. I'll speak to you guys on Tuesday the 14th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Look out for that brief for the upcoming uh, community challenge. Alright, good night guys.